In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a gauge chart in Excel. And so this is what a gauge chart looks like. And over on this next tab here, I'll show you how to make that from scratch. So I'm going to start with making two columns, one for the marker, one for the interval. And the marker literally is just that sliver of, of black that shows you where on that gauge chart you are. So I'm going to start with the low end, which is always going to be zero and then the percentage of completion, which for now I'm gonna to set to, to 50%. Size of the slice, let's see it's five, or the marker I guess I should say really. The high end, and this is just a catch all to make sure it's everything adds up to 200. And I'll show you why later. And then I've got the beginning, middle, and end pieces of the gauge chart, and the amount that's gonna be blank. So I'm gonna set these at 25, 50, 25, and then again, I'm going to do 200 minus all these, these pieces. Then I'm going to select all this, go to insert chart, I'm going to all charts and select the combo one. So for the marker, I'm going to select the pie chart. And for the interval, I'm going to select this donut chart. And so the secondary axis for the marker is fine. The interval has the other axis. I'm gonna hit okay. And so this is this is nothing what we want it to look like just yet. But what I'm gonna do is first off, format the data series. And depending on which version of Excel you have, it might look a little different. You might get a menu pop up. But what you're looking for is the angle of the first slice. So you wanna change that from zero to 270 and do that for both series. So I'll switch over to the interval here and angle first slice to 270. And then what you'll notice now is instead of starting from here at zero degrees, we've moved it 90, 180 into the 270 mark here. And so that's key to making sure that the gauge chart starts where it's supposed to, otherwise it would look a little funny starting from here and going down here. The next step is really just, just changing the colors at this point. Um, this is actually a bit of a tricky part because you've got two charts and one on top of the other. And so to figure out what piece you're selecting can be a little tricky. So what I always do is right click on here. And then what you wanna do is you'll notice here, it shows me what I've selected. And rather than trying to pick these precisely what I want, if you use control left and right, you can move your way through the different pieces of the chart. So here I've selected uh, a piece on the marker tab. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the, the fill color to blank just to make sure I've got everything is blank that I don't need. So now I'm starting to see the, the other, the donut chart show up there. Control right again gets me to this, this little gray sliver. And that's, that's really my marker. So that one I'm gonna set to black because that one I actually want to show up and then the rest of it, this area here, I wanna set this to blank again, no fill. And so now, I keep going to control right. And so this this initial piece, this is, I'd imagine, you know, the zero to 25% piece. And so this one, because this is nowhere near target, I'm gonna put, put it as red, as in we're nowhere near our goal. This middle piece, you know, I can use a light green, but obviously you can pick whatever, whatever sort of makes sense. And then the last piece, I'll put bright green to show that we're really right on target. And then lastly is this bottom piece, which is what I call the blank. And that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it to blank. And so right there, you've already kind of got a, got the gauge chart that, that you're looking for. So you could really stop here and then do what you, what you want from here. Um, I'll just do a, a, a little bit more for me just to show you um, to where I've at that chart that I showed you at the beginning. So I'm gonna get rid of the title. I'm gonna get rid of the legends. And what I can do is stretch this as far out as I as I need to. And so obviously it's it's not optimal because it takes up so much space. But what you can do is if I go under the under the chart design, there should be an option here for 
no fill there we go and so now it's transparent so now it's not going to get in the way if you want to and, and the border as well to no line and so that way if you were to move this around now it's going to integrate easily with any other elements you have on your report or dashboard and it's not going to mess anything up so that's that's one thing i always always do just for simplicity um what you could also do is you know change how the look of these different pieces on the interval look like so if i go to format shape effects i just like to let them pop out a little bit more um, and again i'm using control left and right here control right at this point just to make sure i've got the right piece selected and so now it just stands out a little bit more here um, so what you can do is on the marker remember the size of the slice or size size of the marker really I can adjust this down to two to make it a bit uh, thinner and you can see how it starts to adjust the percentage of completion you know if I set this to 75 it's gonna move down there if it's at 100 all the way to the end zero and then this high end piece always is is updating so ideally we'd want to make this link to let's say a sales figure so if we've got sales of five hundred dollars and our goal is one thousand dollars what i could do is something as simple as you know five hundred divided by a thousand and then what i'm going to want to do is multiply this by a hundred because i don't want a decimal and so that way you know as as the sales number gets updated then uh, then the chart gets updated as well and one other piece that I always like to like to do with with gauge charts just to add a little bit extra to them is adding a text box in here so if I just put something over here uh, no border and then what I'll do is link to the cell h4 all right and so just like that I can have the the number the sales number whatever I need on there and so if I change this to no grid lines it'll look a lot cleaner and how you might have it on on a dashboard so this way you know you have something dynamic that you know could change however you like put in the sales number you could put it put that goal number and link it say the same way as well uh, I just find using a text box is a bit easier but obviously you can just key it in and link it through a cell but using a text box is just a bit easier to to move around um but other than that that's uh that's in a nutshell how you do a gauge chart uh the other thing you could do is change the slice the size of these intervals so for instance if i did if i wanted it really be even i could do you know 33.3 33.3 33.3 and now you've got something a bit more balanced um so depending on which pieces you want showing up bigger or smaller that's um that's how you could do it so yeah and obviously you can change this design to to, to make it look how you want to by just changing the different elements again it's just a matter of clicking on here and then using control right and then when in doubt is what you've selected you can see on here which which items you've got or which which chart you've selected so hope you found that useful and uh, thanks for watching.